Robbers. This is Rob Reinhold. I'm joined by Mr. Ankit Sharma. And here we are. We're in the fourth week of May. Cannot believe how fast this year has been going. So let's check in on what happened last week. The biggest thing that happened last week was the equities broke out. And they broke out in a pretty big way. And it was really all about the NASDAQ. The tech stocks dragged the market higher. The rest of the market didn't really want to go higher. It was not participating. And tech was so strong that by the end of every day, everything else just decided to go along with it. And we actually had a pretty good up week. So we do have a breakout. And we have a breakout of a couple of other things as well. So the 10-year bond yields in the U.S. actually broke out of the range as well. So we've been in this low range environment, an environment we didn't really love for trading. That being said, there is still a lot of things that are in a range, and we have stuff like gold's in a range, oil's in a range. The dollar looked like it was going to be breaking out, and it just sunk right back in the range, and cryptos are in a range. So we have some early things breaking out. So the question is, is this going to cause the rest of the market to break out, where we're going to start to see lots of movement, or are we going to see the things that did break out this week pull back a little bit and go back into their range? What do you think, Ankit? I think this is a good uh, moment to kind of take a look at everything across the board because you're right. We are in this environment where everything seems to be stuck. So the question is, what's the catalyst? I think what I'm looking for is a bit of a catalyst. You know, the breakout happened without a catalyst. So I would really, this is where if this, you know, rising tide will, you know, lift all boats, or do we see, uh, you know, some of the other markets start to uh, break out in that way as well? I think we're still pre uh, preemptively that we can make a call on that. Uh, I would have loved to see, uh, you know, the way we are ending this week where, uh, you know, we have seen substantial losses in, let's say, uh, the gold market or we have seen substantial move in the FX. But I think the way we are ending, uh, it's, this is still a U.S. equity story. So... What is a catalyst? I think we have to wait for that. I know the debt ceiling is something that we're talking about. Maybe that provides some catalyst, but I think we need a bit of a shakeup to rock the boat where then everything else start to move uh, at the same time. So I think next week will be a good week for a confirmation. If this is something that breaking out, we'll probably expect more breakouts in other markets as well. But if things go fall back in the range, then the story remains the same. So that's where I'm at. Well, let me give you my two cents and everyone my two cents. I do think we will fall back into the range and have more choppy markets ahead like we've experienced over the last couple of weeks. Let's go through the economic reports. So we had a couple of big ones here. Take a look at Canadian CPI. Canadian CPI was hotter than expected month over month, but the median was less than expected, but the year-over-year -year trimmed was hotter. So overall, this was a stronger CPI than expected. And we did see the CAD move up on the news. We also got the employment change out of Australia and take a look at that nasty number. They were supposed to have a gain of 24,000 jobs, a loss of 4,000. Other than that, we did hear from Chairman Powell on Friday, nothing really of note. It was a panel where he had some Q and A's that he went forward. Nothing came out that rocked the market. So we had anticipated that that could be a market moving event, but it definitely was not. So let's go ahead and take a look just at the raw numbers here. Last week, the raw numbers, we had the S&P up 1.7%. World indexes continue to trail. So again, as Anka said, this is a U.S. equities story. And not just that, let me put up this chart here that shows you this is a U.S. equities large cap stocks story. That's really what this is all about. Take a look at how much the NASDAQ 100 has done in comparison to all the rest of the markets. This is a very narrow run higher. That being said, we can't ignore that it was a breakout. Cryptos were up, gold was down, oil up a little bit, but I really want to focus on this S&P chart. This is a breakout. You can't call it anything other, so you have to respect that. Now look, I don't feel bullish inside, and I'm going to be using this a lot over the next couple of weeks because I think it's very important. When you get a breakout and you don't feel like it's a real breakout, you have to ask yourself, why do you feel that? Why do you feel that? Do you feel like the economy is not so strong? Are you worried about inflation? 
All of these things are about how you feel. Feelings get in the way of trading. This is a breakout. Period. Even if you don't feel like it is. You have to treat this as a breakout at this point. You have no other choice if you are a technical trader. So we have to be mildly bullish at least on the markets, if not moderately bullish. If we take a look at what happened, look at the Kiwi this week. Big move up on the Kiwi and big move down on the yen. So Kiwi yen would have been a killer trade all week long, but take a look at everything else. That is very, very flat movement. Nothing went up or down more than like a quarter of a percent. This is the kind of market we've been warning people of is that, hey, this is a very difficult choppy market. There's not a lot of opportunities. You really need to be picking your shots very well. We come over here to crypto. Look at Litecoin. Had a stellar week. Just playing catch up. It's really underperformed. But Bitcoin down 0.05%. That is incredible that that's all it moved this week. So everything is still pretty stagnant. We need to see some clear movements outside of just the U.S. equities breaking forward. So let's take a look at world equities. This is the world equities, and you can see they didn't break out. They haven't broken out. This is another thing that's a, really making me question on, okay, U.S. stocks breaking out, the rest of the world, not so much. We come over here to crypto, there is no breakout, there's no run, there's no risk on move happening in these markets. So ultimately, we have to really just take a look at, okay, where is the market? What's coming up on the schedule here? We have a clear breakout in equities, but not a clear breakout in really anything else. On Tuesday, we get European PMIs. We also hear from the RBNZ. So we're going to be watching that one for policy statements. We'll see what happens. And then you can see for the rest of the week, nothing until Friday with a core PCE price index. This is the Fed's preferred inflation measure. This is going to be quite important, that Friday report. So this week, U.S. equities likely continue to go. Will it pull everything else with it? Will it pull everything out of its ranges? I hope so, because the sideways trading, not my favorite. I'd much rather see trending markets. We do hear from the RBNZ on Wednesday, and then the economic reports we talked about. One last thing to talk about for this week's outlook is the U.S. debt ceilings talk. On Friday, late on Friday, it looks like the talks broke down and the parties left and they're no longer negotiating. We basically have two more weeks left until the government becomes insolvent in the U.S. This is starting to get a little bit critical here and the market had really priced in that everything was going to go smoothly. So this next week, I think the debt ceiling talks are the number one thing on the agenda for the markets. All right, let's go into each currency, take a look one by one. Let's take a look at just crypto. I'm going to go through these really quickly because we've talked about there's nothing happening here and there's really nothing happening here. Uh, Bitcoin is drifting lower. Okay, it's drifting lower, but right now it's flat. We've got Bitcoin Cash is drifting lower and right now it's flat. Ethereum drifting lower and right now it's flat. Okay, so look, that's where we are in those three. And then you come over here to Litecoin, you're like, oh my gosh, what is this doing? This thing just had a pop out of nowhere. Okay, this thing is showing some momentum right here, right now. Do I want to buy it? No, no, we just had a 12 point run. That is basically a 45% run. I'm not touching this thing after it goes up 45%. On a pullback, maybe, but I don't like cryptos at all here. The whole basket isn't working well. Moving on to the dollar. I really want to get Anka's take on the dollar because on Thursday I thought, oh, finally, finally we're going to be breaking out. And you can see that candle on Friday said probably not. What's your call on dollar here, Ankit? Rob, well, like you said, the like dollar looked very promising for a breakout, and then it just totally turned around. So here's what I'm noticing lately. You know, the 
if you take a look at Fed fund futures, this is what we you know we talk about what the interest rate expectation is. There's a lot of fluctuation in there, which is again causing a lot of these movements. So, for example, yesterday uh, we were sitting at about forty percent for a rate hike in the upcoming week meeting. Remember, just two weeks ago we were talking about you know cutting rates um, in the uh, upcoming meetings, and we were talking about like how you know the markets are sort of uh, taking a lead there, where the Fed is saying no, no, we're not going to do that. So here we are yesterday, the expectation was at 40%. I just checked this morning, it's sitting at about 18.5%. So there's a lot of back and forth. And I think that's what it is. It's the interest rate expectation is what moving a lot of these currencies. Now talking about Canadian dollar, it was the exact same scenario with, with the hotter inflation. And we had you know their Bank of Canada Governor Macklem also said that if the inflation continues to be sticky, they don't mind rating, raising rates again. And there you go. We started to see the, the Bank of Canada, the, the, uh, the fund features going up for a rate hike as well. And that's what's really happening. You know, we're seeing this expectation prop up and it really props up the currency. And then something happens and we start to see a diminished expectation. So uh, that's the market that we are in. And that's what we're seeing. We don't have these very strong definitive trends. So let's uh, take a look at yen now. And yen is the currency that's clearly trending. And we talk about, uh, you know, the, the trend and the velocity score is really uh, on a minus one and a minus two. Again, this is really uh, reminding me of last year. Around the same time, you know, we had the Bank of Japan that's staying ultra dovish. And guess what? It's the same outcome. We had the exact same thing last year. We're seeing the exact same thing this year. So it seems like that is the path to least resistance. We still have uh, another 2 to 3% to drop before we hit October lows. And I think maybe that's where we can find a little bit of a support. Uh, but for now, this is, uh, this is where, uh, like I said before, a lot of these uh, central banks and the interest rate expect expectations are really what driving a lot of these currencies. Now, let's, say, let's take a look at other currencies as well. Let's take a look at uh, Euro and Swiss franc. And again, those were the areas where uh, we saw the money going in. And those have kind of st stagnated a little bit here as well. So this is where I get this question, you know, is this time to short this yet? Uh, or is it just a pause? And this is where we have seen this in the past and we just taking a pause here. So we don't know which way it's gonna go. The only way we know is when it breaks down lower or it breaks the, uh, up higher. So both the Swiss franc and the euro is in the same boat. And as always, we talked about how Swiss franc is still outperforming the euro. So I would still say I like the Swiss franc on the upside more than I like it on the euro. And we can see that right now, um, it's still above that 20-day moving average where and 50-day moving average where now the euro is below that. So clear relative strength of weakness between those two. They are staying that on the divergent note. And until we see the, them uh, or one outperforms the other, we want to stay on that course. And here we are with the British pound. You know, that thing has also gone sideways. But remember, it's not really falling apart. It's not really catching a run, but it's not really falling apart. So it's just a pause. So we still need to clear out some areas for us to get excited and say, let's buy here and hold it for a few days or sell it here. We, we are not in that situation yet. So let's just keep a bit of a pause on the UK, uh, on the British pound as well. Now going into uh, some of these growth currencies, so Canadian dollar, as you can see, was a bit of a shining spot for the last few days. And that really came to an end as we hit that resistance. And that again, the very um, you know, important technical resistance that we have that we have tested multiple times. So this is where it's very important to take a look at these uh, very strong support and resistance and trade between those lines. You know, these breakouts are not as strong as it breaks these levels. So I'm always a bit of a doubter when it comes to breaking out. I need more confirmation when I hit that resistance, but seems like that back and forth continues. And well, we are seeing the velocity score moving lower for CAD as well. So we'll see what happens with CAD next week if the expectation comes out for a rate hike out of the out of Bank of Canada. But for now, we are seeing that party being over for now. So uh, going into some of the other growth currencies, Aussie and Kiwi. And look at that divergence. Aussie chart not doing anything. Uh, we are in this little range where 
Uh, it's right at those moving averages. This is clear range bound price action and not a whole lot of conviction. So we have we have uh, seen the bad employment report from Australia last week, but again, did not create any big movement here. And here we are of an outlier with the with the Kiwi being the strongest currency. And if you really look back to last week when we spoke, uh, Kiwi actually had made a major turn back down to those moving averages. And here we are back at the resistance. So question is, well, can we break out of the resistance? This is another resistance that has been there for the last few months as well. So for now, I think we could find a bit of a resistance here. Uh, we have the RBNZ next week, which could cause a bit of a breakout. But again, I think uh, that's the that's the story here. Uh, they're taking turns, and for now, the Kiwi is the winner. We'll see what happens next week, uh, and how, with the guidance is from the RBNZ as well. But I just want to highlight one thing: is that similar to what we are seeing in the crypto markets, and similar to what we are seeing in the equity markets, this is a very a singular story instead of a broader story. You know, we don't have, if this was a big risk on week, then we should see Aussie rally. We should have seen all the other growth currencies rally, but that's not the case. Similar to what happened in crypto, it's only the Litecoin the best. And now going into the equity markets, it's only the big tech is the best. So this has never been more crucial to only look at what's moving, what's the strongest, and just go with it. This is not the environment where we can kind of look at everything else at the same time. Uh, I think we just have to look for what's running. Back to you, Rob. And Ankit, I think that's very good advice. Uh, this market is not moving together. As you said, it's singular stories. You really have to identify those singular stories. So let's wrap up our trend score here. So the only two things that are trending to the upside are the Kiwi and Litecoin. And look, Litecoin is going to ultimately follow the rest of the coins. And you can see the rest of the coins are actually moving lower. So for me, I'm just not interested in any of the cryptos at this point, which leaves me with very few choices on this broad trend. You know, what is really moving right now? Kiwi. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing at a plus two, plus three, or a minus two, minus three outside of cryptos. So it's very difficult to really get excited when you get a whole lot of stuff going nowhere. And then when we take a look at the velocity scores, you can see most everything is just sideways here and we're left with the Kiwi as the singular story, but we do have some negative currencies. So for me, I like the yen and the CAD short. I love that CAD short coming up to that resistance, hitting its head on it. I'm not saying that CAD's going to break down for the next couple of months, but I do like shorting at the high end of ranges and buying at the bottom end of ranges in sideways markets, which that's exactly what this is. So for me, I'm looking at Kiwi CAD and Kiwi Yen. So let's actually go take a look at those and then we'll take a look at some of the things Anka wants to look at. First up is Kiwi CAD. Now take a look at this big move. We had a big move up here, Kiwi, and then we've been drifting in this really, really shallow downtrend for a long time. Now this is a pattern called a bull flag pattern. The bull flag is when you have a huge move and then you get this flag-like pattern down. So as you can see here, we're in this bull flag and the really good place to enter is on a breakout of this upper trend line. We're not there yet. We are definitely not there yet, but this could potentially be another major leg higher off the daily chart. So let's take a look at the four hour chart and you can see that, you know, we are starting to see some momentum to the upside. I want to see a little bit more. So I like this trade. This is my favorite trade going into next week, but I, I want to see a little bit more. We're seeing a lot of things failing breakouts. I want to make sure this thing does go. So I'm not looking at this thing first thing in the week, but I will be watching this one for some nice green candles, maybe even clearing out above this 8527. That to me would be a pretty clear indication that we could only that we could also break out of our trend line and the last two points of resistance. That to me would be more of the green light to to get more long. And then the other one, take a look at Kiwi Yen. Focus on a daily chart first. 
you can see daily chart is clearly breaking out of some resistance. Ultimately, look at where we are. Ultimately, we're still just in a three or four year sideways trend. Well, two year sideways trend. We are getting up near the top end of the range. Again, I'm a little hesitant to buy breakouts here because we're not seeing the whole market breaking out. We're just seeing little things here or there. But this is the place where I will be hunting Kiwi Yen. Any pullback in Kiwi Yen, I will absolutely looking to be buyer. Okay, what do you want to take a look at? Uh, one of the things that I want to take a look at is uh, the DXY. And we talked about this last week. And this is where, you know, if you look at the, the currency basket that we have for the dollar, uh, which is more equally weighted, where we have the DXY, which is more weighted where the euro dollar and the second biggest holding is the, is the dollar yen. So clearly those two currencies are moving right now. And that's where we are seeing a bigger, you know, sort of movement here. So the question really is that we have been sideways for the most part in this, um, in this DXY for entire April and May. We were sideways, and here we are above the moving averages. We have a support in place. Is this an uh, opportunity to buy? And just going back, uh, just on Monday, uh, Monday was a down day. And as you can see, that that was right at that 50 to moving average. But that was just a buying opportunity. And after that, we have just three days to the upside. The question is, is this buying the dip opportunity in the dollar? But most importantly, not just the dollar, but euro dollar and dollar yen. So, Robert, you want to pull up uh, euro dollar for me? And this is why this is the I'm more interested in euro dollar and dollar yen right now because that's where they're moving. You can see that we have broken below the 20 to 50. I would love to get a bit of a pop to short into. But for now, I think every rally that's happening could be a bear rally pattern. So, this is what I'm looking at. I think next week, um, if the pattern stays intact the way it is and we continue to buy the dips, I think I would like to short every little rally that we see in the euro dollar. Now, same thing, dollar yen, Rob, if you want to pull that up. And I find it interesting that we broke that above that, that resistance at 138. And I know we almost dipped lower, but then the way we are ending right now, the candlesticks don't look as bad. So, you know, these are the currency pairs that we haven't traded. You know, we have traded dollar cad, we have traded euro, you know, Aussie dollar, but you know, the, the dollar yen I've been very uninterested for the most part that it was st stuck in a small range. And same thing goes with the euro dollar. So if they are the one that's moving, I think we should focus on those currencies. So dollar yen, is this a uh, pullback to buy into? And this is where we break it down to a lower time frame. I think we'll find a lot of buy the dip opportunities in those currencies. So um, I wanted want to take a look at both the, the, the dollar basket, but all, this, all at the same time also pay attention to DXY because maybe that's just giving us a two different pictures. And, and that would allow us to focus on the right currency pair. And that's really what I'm looking at, Rob, next week. Um, and again, we have lots of data coming out, but I'm really focused on RBNZ. Because right now we're in this environment, as much as we like the charts, we are in this environment where we are not seeing currencies run off these rate hikes. So if we are at the top end of the range in the Kiwi, I'm open, as much as I'm open to buy, buy a breakout, I'm very much open to selling a, a sort of a, a fake breakout as well. So it's a two-part picture. I think I'm, I'm much more comfortable trading within the range uh, rather than trying to find a breakout. We'll have to see what happens. We are seeing a running ahead of that event. So maybe we see a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of a price action. So I think this is a kind of market where you want to be open for both case scenario. Don't get married to an outlook and just focus on what's moving. Back to you. The more we were looking through charts, Anka, the more I am getting convinced that we do sink back down into ranges. So like I said, we saw... 10-year uh, yields break out this week. We saw uh, U.S. equities break out this week. Nothing else is really breaking out, and a lot of things are hitting their heads. That's telling me that the market really isn't ready to go anywhere, but we'll see. As you said, let's be flexible. I do think selling those things that have made a run to the top, I like CAD short. That is my number one idea this week is CAD short. But if you're right, if that Kiwi hits its head, that, that looks like a great short as well because it's simply just in the range. 
be flexible and just, again, you want to really focus on what's moving now because there's a lot of things that aren't moving now. Focus on the things that are moving. All right. Well, that wraps it up for us. Thank you for joining us for the Currency Room. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great weekend.